Say hello to my subscribers right there. Uh, hey, we we part of the company. We part, we part of that guy right there. It's the best mechanic in the company. Yeah, yeah uh, and now he's an influencer. You no, too. No, <laughs> serious. That's one of the best mechanics in the company. Okay, what's up my guys? How you doing? This is Holmes Law again on another video. If you're new on the channel, my name is Mel. Welcome to the channel. I'm glad to have you here. If you're a subscriber already, also welcome. Thanks for watching another video. Today we're going to be doing, like I just mentioned before, box sets. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to actually elevate or change the rise of this conduit so that it can actually go into this junction box. As you can see here, it just doesn't go in. It's exactly 3 8 of an inch off, okay? Now, most of these boxes here, whether it's a deep box or the inch and a half or the shallow, they're always gonna be most um, 3 8 of an inch. You have some other boxes that are gonna be five eighths of an inch off, you know what I'm saying, the elevation of this. Like the actual knockout would be five eighths of an inch higher. You know, some are three eighths, some are five eighths, some are even three quarters of an inch, depending on what type of boxes you're working with. Okay, then you have some panels that are, you know, that have the knockouts already, you know, that are a little bit, you know, more. Okay, which you can actually just do a regular offset in that case. But for this case here, you know, we're gonna be doing box sets, okay? Some electricians like myself and others just actually do it by eye. You know, they can do it by feel and, and actually, you know, get a box set done quickly, okay? Me, on the other hand, when I'm doing multiple multiple box sets and i'm gonna be lining them all up and they're gonna be all on the same panel or whatever the case may be they're gonna be in a box i like to actually do a calculated box set the way i'm gonna show you now because they all look parallel and they just all don't look random and just unplanned you know what i'm saying now this is the best way to actually do it where you actually get them all parallel if you're going to be doing multiple you know box sets although some people just might you know disagree with me and you know they might be able to just do them all by eye and by feel me i can't i like to calculate everything and just actually write everything down and put my marks on everything that's just the way that i am <clears throat> some of you might disagree with me Either way, this is the way that I do it, and I hope that, you know, um, it can help you, okay? So, to begin with, there's two ways you can do this. You can actually use two different multipliers. You can use a 10 degree, which is my favorite, and a 5 degree, okay? The reason why I don't use a 5 degree multiplier is because on the bender, you don't really have a, a, a mark for five degrees. So it would be the same thing as just randomly bending it by feel or by eye, okay? <clears throat> so, and that's why I just go directly to the 10 degree multiplier, which is 5.76. Now, if you want the five degree multiplier, it's 11.4, but that's neither here nor there. The 10 degree multiplier is what I use most of the time and i will write it for you here 5.76 you could even go with 5.8 let me write it here or 5.8 okay now with that said it's the same thing as any ordinary offset okay so like i said this knockout the connector is elevated off the, off the actual floor or, you know, this ping pong table will, on your occasion out in the field would be off the wall or wherever you have it, you know what I mean? Three eighths of an inch, okay? So we're gonna multiply our 5.76 
by 3 eighths of an inch. Now, if you actually change that to the decimal value, okay, you're gonna get 0.375. So 0.375 times our multiplier, 5.76, 5.76 is going to equal 2.16, which is the same thing as two and an eighth. Okay, <clears throat> now, when we do our marks on our conduit, we're gonna do them exactly. This is the way that I like to do it. You know, you can actually, this front part right here, you could actually put it as far as you want to, just so long as your marks are, you know, two and an eighth apart. But what I like to do is, I like to actually keep it the same. So if I do two and an eighth, I'm gonna do two and an eighth spacing in the front too as well. You know what I mean? So, that's how I actually do it. Let me grab this pencil over here. So as you can see, I know it's upside down, but just bear with me. I have two and an eighth here, okay? And I'm gonna put another two and an eighth down here. Another way I like to do it, you know, when you're marking your conduit, I like to, you know, if this is the way I like to do it. I do my two and an eighth, and I just like to add it and do, you know, four. I would do four and a quarter. So I think it'd be easier if you learn to just, you know, like add on whatever marking you're gonna put on. This way you don't have to move your your your, your tape measure or whatever. And it's actually a little bit more accurate because you, you seem to start moving it around too much, you might not get the right spot. Anyway, let's keep moving on. Okay, so now that we have our two marks, two and an eighth, okay, and two and an eighth, this first mark is, you could actually put it wherever you want. As long as these two marks are two and an eighth like you calculated before here, then that's all that matters, okay? And, you know, you can put your mark all the way around the actual pipe. to use here is I don't use the arrow per se I just like to use the front the front of the shoe this part here I just like to use this basically it you know what I mean it makes it a lot easier and it's just better to do it that way because you're not gonna actually have any conduit if you put it under you use the arrow you're not gonna have anything for this hook to grab Okay, so let's go to actually bending this actual box set. But before I do that, I want to tell you that you're going to be using this 10 degree mark here. Okay, and the bottom of your conduit is going to be parallel to this mark. Not necessarily coming down touching it, okay? You just want to be parallel to this mark. And it's not very much that you have to bend. After bending these a while, you'll get the, the hang of it and you won't even really need to even look anymore. Okay, so let's go over to bend this pipe. Okay, I like to always use that when I'm bending an offset, okay? 
especially the climb bender, it has an arrow right down the center of it. I don't know if you can see it, but the climb bender has an arrow on the back side of it and on the front, so you can actually line that center up perfectly. Okay, now we're gonna actually make sure you have that second mark in the front of the shoe. Same thing, we're gonna take this down to a 10 degree. Okay, and that's basically it. You know, it's very, very easy. The thing is, is that sometimes we might have to actually tweak it out a little bit, you know, but when you actually put the marks on it and you bend it to 10 degrees, you should be all right because at least you know exactly where your marks are and you can always go back to your bender and place it where it was before to fix your mark. That's why I always say it's important to always place your marks on your bender. Even if it's a small little kick, whatever the case may be, put it on the bender. Now, if we come back to our table, okay, and you see, okay, it elevates off of the actual floor about exactly three eighths of an inch, okay? Now, some boxes are gonna be a little more, could be five eighths of an inch or maybe even three quarters of an inch, whatever the case may be. It's just, you could use it just like any regular offset, okay? The only thing is that you're gonna use a different degree and, and the multiplier is gonna change. Okay, so like I said, the best multiplier would be 10 degrees, okay, and another, another way that you could do it without even um, multiply, you know, actually using any multiplier is you could actually just come back two and three quarters, you know, and then um, mark another two and three quarters and just bend it by feel, you know. That's another way, that's another way that I do it, you know what I mean? And you could take it down to 10 degrees, give, you know, 10 degrees, just about, you know, 10 degrees around, around that area, you know, you can bring it down. That's a way to just actually what I call freestyle it, you know, and just do it, you know, by eye. But if you want to actually calculate it to get all, you know, parallel box sets in case you're doing them all side by side, this is the way to do it. You know, as you can see, we go right in there and you just, you know, it's perfect. You know what I mean? You don't ever have to worry about, you know, having to do it three, two, four times over again, you know? You just calculate it like you would any other offset and there you go. Like what I was actually saying was I wanted to actually show you some of the tools that I use. You know, I like to use, I had to buy a new one. That's why you're seeing this actually new you know is these are my go-to when i'm bending regular actually any type of conduit this snow dog i like to use it you know i like to keep this in my pocket at all times you know when i'm bending either I'm, i usually only use this when i'm bending larger conduit you know two three inches like anything bigger than three quarter i like to use this you know i use it a lot I actually lost mine, I have to get another one. Um, this one, I, I actually do use it, but I don't use the no dog on it, only because sometimes it likes to just like slide down or fall down, I guess I guess the screw on this one isn't that tight or isn't made that well for on mine, I guess. You know, I'm not really sure what it is, but I like to have the smaller one. And the reamer. I love this reamer when I'm bending smaller conduit. I mean, I have the reamer and I have the screwdriver in there as well too. It's actually one of the better ones. You don't have to worry about your, you know, your flathead or your Phillips, you know, camming out or, you know what I mean? Like the flathead slipping out. This is actually the best. I could do it one handed if I'm in an awkward position or whatever the case may be. This is my go-to, man. I, I love this. Uh, this is usually always in my pocket. This along with the small channel locks and um, my, my level and my tape measure. You know, those are always in my pocket no matter what. You know, oh, along with a calculator, always when I'm bending conduit. 
So when I'm bending conduit, I always have my no dog, my level, my reamer, depending if I'm doing large conduit or not. Um, actually, you know, uh, um, it's always in my pocket anyway. Um, definitely my folding ruler. You know, somebody asked me why I like to use this. Ah, this is what I was actually, you know, brought up with uh, in the trade, man. You know, but um, most of all, I like it because, you know, when I'm bent, when I'm actually bending, you know, and I need to take some short measurements, you know, whether it be, you know, anything between 24 inches to an inch, you know, I can just stretch it out. I don't have to worry about the freaking tape measure falling or not. You know what I mean? Like it's, it, it's actually sturdy. You know, and I could actually just hold it with one hand, you know, and mark my conduit. I don't have to bother with, you know, making sure the tape measure doesn't fall or it's grabbed or if it's magnetic or not. You know, I could actually hold it and that's it, you know. Short measurements is really good with two. <clears throat> you know, I could just bam and then I got my measurement and that's it. You know, I just, I love it. This is my go-to. I'm always using this ruler, you know. I actually run through a lot of these. You know, um, I actually like the Milwaukee fiberglass one too, but um, I didn't have it last time I bought one, I didn't have it, so I had to get the Lufkin. But this has been lasting, it's pretty good. You know, so yeah, so this is what I go to. Also, another reason why I like it is when I need to copy a bend, you know, all I have to do is just basically, you know, see what, what kind of bend it is. If it's, you know, I'll put it up against the conduit, you know, and if it's, let's just say it's going to be a 45, it's like this, or whatever it is. I'll come, and I'll come down. I'll know it's on the 23. I know, that's it. It's on 23, and that's it. I can put my, my, my ruler away, and that's it. Boom. Come back down the ladder. You know, I'll bring it back out. And I don't know what, what bend it is. I forgot what bend it was. I go back to my 23, my 23 mark, bam. And that's it. And then I stretch it out. And I, that's the bend I have right there. Then I could either measure the bend or whatever the case may be. And that's it. That's why I like my folding ruler, you know? Okay, how to use a later to, you know, bend conduit. Okay, because this the laser, like I've said it before in other videos, is gonna be your friend. It's gonna make your job a whole lot easier and faster. Stay tuned for that one. Okay, so very simple. Okay, I'm gonna show you two simple examples on how you might need to use a laser. Okay, so now this is just an example. Let's just say, like how you see it out here, we're on a Kindorf rack, okay, and um Basically, this is the conduit that I'm running. It's just an example. I know it's a little bent already. It has a box set on it, okay? Now, we are currently running this conduit, okay? And we want to jump over to a rack. Okay, hold on one second. Let me get my, uh, my ruler, okay? And we want to jump over to this rack over here right now and go side by side. Actually, we want to go, we want to land right where this white line is okay and i'm currently over here on another rack i need to jump over here all right right where this white line is for whatever the reason is i have an obstruction whatever the case may be okay so i need to offset it and right now i'm on the floor this rack is all the way up on the ceiling okay and <clears throat> Whatever the case may be, it could be far away or, or uh, this could be more than what it actually is. It could be 10 inches, 20 inches apart that we have to make an offset. We need to find out. We don't know what the offset is, okay? And we're basically on the floor. Another way of doing it besides going up to the ceiling and actually measuring your offset is you could actually measure it off the floor. Okay, you can measure it off the floor with your laser. How you would do that is you would actually, to get a accurate measurement, okay, you would actually go to where your actual conduit is now, okay? I can't get under this conduit 
right now, but let's just say that it is under the conduit, okay? Let's just say that my laser is actually under the conduit right now and I have it pointing under my conduit, like so, okay? I would take, now that I lined it up perfectly, okay? Now let me add that too. When you're lining up your laser, you wanna take reference points, okay? You wanna make sure that your laser is truly straight. So now that you have it pointing straight, you wanna take a tape measure, okay and you know get some kind of reference point where you have that you know it's square just to make sure that your laser is truly straight right now off of this line my laser is at 11 inches i'm not sure if you can see that okay my laser is at 11 inches now let's see if i go further up if i go further up i'm actually at 11 and a quarter, so I'm not truly straight here. Now I'm at 11, and over here I'm at, a, at 11. <clears throat> See, over here I'm at 11. Okay, so that's how you get it straight, man. You want to get some kind of square reference mark where you can actually make sure that your laser is straight. Okay, so back to the topic. Now that I'm have it straight and I have it under my conduit where I'm actually running right now. What I want to do is I can actually put a mark on the floor or if it's a wall or whatever the case may be, put some kind of mark, you know, literally mark it, literally mark it on the floor. Okay, this is your mark. Bam, now you have your first mark. Then now you want to find out <clears throat> where it is that you want to put and offset your conduit to, okay? So you want to you want to actually put your conduit over here, okay? So let's go and let's put your laser right where you want it to be at, making sure that it is straight, okay? Making sure that it's straight. That's very important, okay? Now, I'm not gonna line it up with that white line because it looks like you can't see it. I'm not even sure if you could actually see it now. All right, so again, making sure that you're straight, taking it off of some kind of, you know, reference point where it's square. You know, anything that could make you get it as accurate as possible. If you can't get it, you know, a reference point off of a wall, or whatever, just try to grab it off of something that you know is as square as you know you can possibly get. This way you know that your laser line is straight, okay? So, let me lower this. Let me see if you could actually see this line. There you go, it's a little better. Now, let's just say that we it's already square and this is where you wanna land it. Now, Ben, we would go and mark this one right here on the floor. Okay, now that you marked it on the floor, you have your two points on the floor already marked. Last thing to do is measure the two points. Let's just say it came out to be eight inches. You know that you need an eight inch offset from here to get to where you want to over here. That's how you would use the laser, okay? Now there's other ways you can use it to actually figure out, you know, how much of a 90 you need or to get on a rack or whatever the case may be. This is just a basic, you know, way of me showing you how you would actually use a laser to actually get measurements and to bend conduit. So for another example, I'm going to show you how to use this later to get like a measurement for a 90 degree bend. Okay, so basically for a 90, you're going on top of a rack. Now, you see how I'm actually, you know, putting the laser on the threaded rod. <clears throat> I'm shooting it towards my Kindle. Okay, now, right now you see it on the wall because that's where the box is, you know. So, I'm going to take my measurement from the laser to my box. And that's going to basically give me my, the, the height of my stub somewhat i still have to add the outside diameter of the conduit because you'll see as when you see when i turn this camera over to the actual kindle 
Okay, the bottom of my condo is going to be resting on it. So when you do a stub, it's to the back of the 90. So you still need to add, you know, the diameter of the condo when you do it this way. So yeah, basically, like I said, laser is going to help you, you know. So I have the wall on one side, the box on one side, and I have the kind off on the other side. You know, so when you when you're measuring it like that to get an accurate measurement, the laser is the best way. Not the only way, but the best way. See, I you can see I got my ruler on there. I have a precise measurement, you know, and that's it. I could actually bend it. All I have to do there is just add on my diameter of whatever conduit, and there goes my 90 degree measurement for the stuff. So it's just a basic little example hope this helps and uh again this is holmes law and i'm out